I believe Mr. Pearson would have got the call if he had picked a different text. But when he announced, I will lift my eyes to the hills, he was done for. Everyone grinned, for everyone knew that those two hill girls from the harbor head had been setting their caps for every single minister who came to the Glen for the last 15 years. And Mr. Newman had too large a family. He stayed with my brother-in-law, James Clough, said Susan. How many children have you got, I asked him. Nine boys and a sister for each of them, he said. Eighteen, said I. Dear me, what a family. And then he laughed and laughed. But I do not know why, Mrs. Dr. Dear. And I am certain that eighteen children would be too many for any man's. He had only ten children, Susan. Explain Miss Cornelia with contemptuous patience. And ten good children would not be much worse for the manse and congregation than the four who are there now. Though I wouldn't say, Anne, dearie, that they are so bad either. I like them. Everybody likes them. It's impossible to help liking them. They would be real nice little souls if there was anyone to look after their manners and teach them what is right and proper. For instance, at school, the teacher says they are model children. But at home, they simply run wild. What about Mrs. Meredith? Asked Dan. There's no Mrs. Meredith. That is just the trouble. Mr. Meredith is a widower. His wife died four years ago. If we had known that, I don't suppose we would have called him. For a widower is even worse in a congregation than a single man. But he was heard to speak of his children, and we all supposed there was a mother, too. And when they came, there was nobody but old Aunt Martha, as they call her. She's a cousin of Mr. Meredith's mother, I believe, and he took her in to save her from the poorhouse. She is 75 years old, half blind, and very deaf and very cranky. And a very poor cook, Mrs. Dr. Dear. The worst possible manager for a manse, said Miss Cornelia bitterly. Mr. Meredith won't get any other housekeeper because he says it would hurt Aunt Martha's feelings. And, dearie, believe me, the state of that manse is something terrible. Everything is thick with dust and nothing is ever in its place. And we had painted and papered it all so nice before they came. There are four children, you say? Asked Dan, beginning to mother them already in her heart. Yes, they run up just like the steps of a stair. Gerald's the oldest. He's 12 and they call him Jerry. He's a clever boy. Faith is 11. She is a regular tomboy, but pretty as a picture, I must say. She looks like an angel, but she is a holy terror for mischief, Mrs. Dr. Dear, said Susan solemnly. I was at the manse one night last week, and Mrs. James Millison was there too. She had brought them up a dozen eggs and a little pail of milk, a very little pail, Mrs. Dr. Dear. Faith took them and whisked down the cellar with them. Near the bottom of the stairs, she caught her toe and fell the rest of the way, milk and eggs and all. You can't imagine the result, Mrs. Dr. Dear, but that child came up laughing. I don't know whether I myself or a custard pie, she said, and Mrs. James Millison was very angry. She said she would never take another thing to the manse if it was to be wasted and destroyed in that fashion. Maria Millison never heard herself taking things to the manse. Sniff, Miss Cornelia. She just took them that night as an excuse for curiosity. But poor Faith is always getting into scrapes. She is so heedless and impulsive. Just like me. I'm going to like your Faith, said Anne decidedly.